In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As friends of Jesus, Martha, Mary, and Lazarus welcome the Lord into their, to their home for the times in which we fail to open our hearts to welcome our friend Christ into our midst. We pause and ask him for his mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all of the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, whose son was pleased to be welcomed into St. Martha, Mary, and Lazarus's house as a guest, grant we pray that through their intercession, serving Christ faithfully in our brothers and sisters, we may merit to be received by you in the halls of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, son of jo Josiah, king of Judah, this message came from the Lord. Thus says the Lord, stand in the court of the house of the Lord and speak to the people of all the cities of Judah who come to worship in the house of the Lord. Whatever I command you, tell them and omit nothing. Perhaps they will listen and turn back, each from his evil way, so that I may repent of the evil I have planned to inflict upon them for their evil deeds. Say to them, Thus says the Lord, If you obey, disobey me, not living according to the law I placed before you, and not listening to the words of my servants, the prophets, whom I send you constantly, though you do not obey them, I will treat this house like Shiloh and make this the city to which all the nations of the earth shall refer when cursing another. Now the priests, the prophets, and all the people heard Jeremiah speak these words in the house of the Lord. When Jeremiah finished speaking, all that the Lord bade him speak to all the people, the priests and the prophets laid hold of him crying, you must be put to death. Why do you prophesy in the name of the Lord? This house shall be like Shiloh, and this city shall be desolate and deserted. And all the people gathered about Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Be Lord, in your great love, answer me. Those outnumber the hairs of my head who hate me without cause. Too many for my strength are they who wrongly are my enemies. Must I restore what I did not steal? Lord, me. Since for your sake I bear insult and shame covers my face, I have become an outcast to my brothers, a stranger to my mother's sons. Because zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who blaspheme you fall upon me. But I pray to you, O Lord, for the time of your favor, O God, in your great kindness, answer me with your constant help.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother Lazarus, who had died. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And anyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Everybody's got their opinion of Pope Francis, some positive, others maybe a little bit more negative. Uh, there are some things that I like about him, though, because oftentimes he'll take what's on my mind and actually say it and put it on paper, and oftentimes it has to do with liturgical things. Uh, many of you who might have your fixed missile probably have an old one, and you need to burn it because uh, Pope Francis changes things every five minutes in it. And one of the changes that he made last year specifically had to do with this feast. Today's feast was properly the feast day of St. Martha. But then last year he decided to add two other people to it, Mary and Lazarus too. And the reason that he did it, well, it makes a lot more sense to me, especially when you start to think about the details of the feast, but also about the gospel that you heard. When we celebrate only the feast day of St. Martha, we're celebrating the feast day of the myopic idea that we have of who Martha was. This busy body that's always worried about taking care of domestic chores, and that's really about it. But when you pierce the gospel, you start to learn so much more, not only about Martha, but about her sister, and perhaps her brother, and more importantly about how friendship with each other, but friendship with God, is absolutely essential in our faith journey. Think about how you constantly characterize poor St. Martha. Uh, don't you always see her as the one that's going about, a little bit passive-aggressive too, basically going to Jesus and say, tell that loaf sister of mine to get herself into the kitchen and start to do a little bit more work. But when you start to really dig a little bit more into St. Martha's background, especially from the gospel that you heard today, you realize something very important about Martha. She espouses many of the characteristics that we often give to her sister Mary, she is actually very prayerful. If you don't believe it, well, listen to the testimony that she gives in the scripture today. Lazarus, her brother, dies, and what happens? She ends up chiding Jesus. If you would have been here, none of this stuff would have happened. We'll get a little bit more to that statement in a few seconds. But most importantly, at the back end of the gospel, she says with assurance that she knows that Christ is the Son of God. And as a result of her knowledge of this, she knows that all will be well. She knows that her brother will rise again. I don't know about you, but if you dig in the sacred scripture, there's only one other person that says that, and it's actually Peter himself. Uh, really, Martha becomes the female equivalent of somebody who's bold enough to actually give that type of testimony to faith, a spiritual endeavor that we usually attribute to Mary and not to Martha. Why? Because Martha, she's so busy, she's locked up in the kitchen, she doesn't have time to pray. Well, then we talk about Mary, too. She's always the one that's constantly praying, never actually doing any kind of action, right? Well, au contraire. <laughs> Go back to the gospel once more. Because you see Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus, 
soaking in, taking in whatever is uh, the master is actually telling her. To sit at the feet of a rabbi is actually a big cultural no-no for those of you of the female persuasion. It's reserved to only males in society. So for her to insert herself at that time in a place that nobody else would expect, that's not really the most contemplative action. It's more active than it is contemplative. Mary ends up being a person of action, which is something that we always describe back to Martha. We always see that Mary's kind of that ditzy sister sitting there just listening, not doing a thing, letting the butterflies pass by, but actually she's more active than we give her credit. And then you got the third wheel in the whole thing, Lazarus. Now, unfortunately, Scripture's a little bit quiet about the brother. I tend in my animated mind to think, well, you got the cat fight between Martha and Mary. Lazarus is smart enough to stay out of it, right? Uh, but regardless, we hear a couple of things about Lazarus. That yummy parable that Jesus tells where the dogs lick the sores on him. But then you hear today's gospel that he is risen from the dead. And there's something about the relationship between Lazarus and the Lord that makes the Lord come backwards to Bethany to take care of the situation, to cause him to weep, as we hear in John's Gospel. And we even hear him described as a friend of Jesus. So there is something important about that dynamic and that relationship that maybe the Scripture doesn't go into into a lot of detail, but there is a causal connection that makes Jesus even turn around and do something that, that's important. Now, one of the things I think when you put these three saints side by side, thank God that Francis is asking us to celebrate not just Martha, but Martha and Mary and Lazarus, is we come to realize how important friendship is in terms of the relationship that we have with our Savior. I can imagine Jesus going into Martha and Mary and Lazarus' house and waiting for the cheap entertainment that's about to ensue. Because if you listen to what the scripture says, it sounds like they're a bunch of characters. And Jesus probably enjoyed every single moment of it. But it was that spiritual friendship that ultimately leads to their conversion, their change, uh, that ends up inviting the Savior back to them. And you can see the progression of that friendship, especially in the reactions. Go back to St. Martha. When Jesus first visits the house, what's her reaction to Jesus? She doesn't chide him directly, but she does it indirectly through her sister. Jesus knows there are domestic things that need to happen, but instead of Martha saying, Jesus, why don't you tell her, why don't you get in here and help me out? He goes around and says to her to come and help me too. But later on in the gospel, by the time you get to the end of John's gospel, Martha spares no punches. She goes up straight up to Jesus and looks at him in the face and says, hey, you'd have been here, none of this stuff would have happened. What's your friendship and relationship with Jesus like? Has it changed? Does it change to the point that one moment you're doing the run around asking somebody else to intercede for you, but then sometimes you look at him very squarely in the face and say, I know this, I believe this, I really wish you would do this for me? It shows a very great depth of growth that happens in the relationship that Martha and Mary and Lazarus have with Jesus, and something I think that we should aspire to ourselves. And how do we get there? Well, it's using all those same characteristics that you see embodied in those three persons in the scripture. We're called to surely be contemplative. How do we know more and more about the Savior? We have to sit at his feet. We have to be with him in prayer. We have to sometimes challenge, chide, tell them exactly what's on our hearts. But we can't just sit around like bumps on a log. One of the other things that we have to do in our friendship with Jesus is act, to go out and be the hands, the feet of Christ, to do those things that we have to do. And Lazarus, of course, represents more than anything else the depth of a friendship when we go out and we are active and contemplative, when we do what the gospel commands us to do. As we prepare to celebrate the Eucharist today, when you start to think about it, that's a pretty tall order. Trying to always sit at the feet of Jesus to soak it all in, trying to take what we hear and go out and do it, and to establish that intimate friendship takes really the totality of our entire spiritual journey. But hopefully we can pray through the intercession of Martha and Mary and Lazarus that we can become just a little bit more like them. 
And through the friendship that we have that grows and changes with our Lord every day, it can make us grow even closer to the relationship that we're called to have with God that calls us to listen, but also calls us to act. We stand to place before our God all of our prayers of petition and of need, that we might grow courageous in our friendship with God, bearing our heart before him each and every time we pray, we pray to the Lord, that we might be renewed in our call to action, constantly serving the poor and vulnerable every day in our midst through the intercession of St. Martha. We pray to the Lord that like Lazarus, we might keep our eyes fixed intently on our friend, our Savior Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord for our beloved dead who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, for those for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord and for the prayers of petition and need that we offer up in the silence of our hearts. Gracious God, may we constantly watch the evolution of our friendship with you and through action and contemplation continue to serve those who are vulnerable in our midst. Provide the needs that we place before your altar through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we proclaim your wonders in Saints Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, O Lord, we humbly implore your majesty that as their homage of love is pleasing to you, so too our dutiful service may find favor in your sight. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for in the marvelous confession of the saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new and offer us your signs of your love. 
and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayer sustains us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and the saints, we too give you thanks. As in exultation, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Amen. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the holy reception of the body and blood of your only begotten Son, O Lord, turn us away from the cares of the fallen world, so that, following the examples of Saints Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, we may grow in sincere love for you on earth, and rejoice to behold you for eternity in heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Have a good day.